With the current focus on Me Too, sexual predation has become front and center, as is rightly so. But we must also look at the underpinnings of a society that has allowed and encouraged such shameful behavior. Patriarchy and its subsets of religion, classism, sexism, and racism are to blame for creating a system of haves and have-nots, powerful and powerless. Jupiter and Scorpio now brings awareness to the financial and sexual component, but what is driving everything is Pluto and Capricorn, deconstruction of the patriarchy, and Uranus Eris in Aries, thrust for freedom and desire for independence. In a capitalist or sexist society such as in Victorian times, the only currency a woman had was feminine wiles, and we see the successful marriage and the farm girl turned industrialist wife, the airline stewardess landing a billionaire, the nurse becoming the respected doctor's life partner. So yes, the economically upwardly mobile nature of attracting a successful partner was built into the system of sexist dynamics. If you couldn't or weren't allowed to make your own living, you had to be chosen or attach yourself on to a breadwinner. Fortunately, more professional and economic opportunities for women have started to change the balance of power, but it is clear that we have a long way to go. And as long as we look at personal relationships as transactional in nature, young poor men will find themselves, and currently do, unable to compete for a woman and home. And if they have limited education and jobs prospects, the situation is even worse. And conversely, slut shaming is the negative reaction against women exploring their sexuality without an economic agenda. But actually, during Roman times, the only women allowed to own property were prostitutes, as unlike wives, they were financially independent. In this case, the sexually unattached woman was sovereign. The archetype of Scorpio focuses on mutual benefit or unhealthy power dynamics, with the most extreme being physical, emotional, or sexual possession of another individual. As a society, we have throughout the years dealt with various Scorpionic themes, sometimes with heart-wrenching consequences. The outer planets have been slowly traveling through Scorpio since the 1950s. Neptune was in Scorpio from roughly 1955 to 1970 and created the illusion of the soulmate, the be-all and end-all love relationship. Likewise, free love drugs and rock and roll emerged. Yet instead of nirvana, illusion, deception, and psychological abuse would often be the repetition compulsion reason for being attracted to a partner. True bonding can only occur within ourselves, and then we can attract another fully embodied self. When Pluto was in Scorpio in the 80s to the early 90s, sexual freedom, gay rights, and the AIDS epidemic became front and center. Sex could be equated with death. Financial shenanigans, another component of Scorpio, included Reagan tax cuts, federal deficits, a small stock market crash, and the seeding of credit card fraud and abuse by financial institutions. The last Saturn and Scorpio cycle of 2012 to 2015 saw co corporate malfeasance in the fracking industry, massive personal debt, and on the social level, the true cost of a relationship. Many individuals were faced with their dark side, which didn't have to mean criminal, but rather their feelings of insecurity, jealousy, depression, and addiction revealed their shadow selves. If you got out alive, you were given a new lease on life. Sex and money and power and secrets are all Scorpio, hence the current outing of sexual predators. We shouldn't be shocked anymore, but mobilized when it comes to these abusers. The obvious sexual predators are despicable, but predation runs rampant in all patriarchal organizations, which includes corporations, churches, courts, and universities. They run wild in the business world where the theft and destruction of resources and human capital, yes, even that phrase is predatory in nature, are an everyday occurrence. And likewise, in the White House, where it has been revealed that an unhealthy number of Trump's aides have been charged with domestic violence. And we can talk all we want about Trump and the largely GOP sexism, but we fail to mention even larger, more egregious assaults on the feminine. Health care, child care, Planned Parenthood, and largest of all, the environment, Mother Earth. When men think they can dominate and extract from the earth and land, it likewise extends to domesticating animals and humans, primarily women and people of color. The attitude of winner takes all of what God has created is where the madness starts. This arises from an extreme insecurity around the ability to truly create, as in to give birth to life. The inferiority of the male in this way gives rise to the projection of weakness outward to the feminine and the subsequent need to dominate. The shadow projection causes dysfunction in all levels of relationships from the micro to the macro level. 
Because even if we get outside of politics and the media and the employer-employee situations, most relationships are still transactional in nature. The already mentioned classic example is the wealthy man with the beautiful trophy wife, but similarly we can see lesser forms of economic or emotional dependency in ordinary, everyday relationships. Some of this is true because most people are not individuated or emotional grown-ups. Their partners either holding their anxiety, addiction, mommy or daddy issues. And the trade-off is financial security or support for remaining mediocre. How many relationships do we actually know of where the partners celebrate each other and support their highest personal evolution? Granted, most of us will not truly eliminate all of our projections and shadows, but greater acknowledgement and integration of these boogeymen leads to spiritual adulthood and more balanced relationships. The current transit of Jupiter and Scorpio, which began last October and continues through November of this year, can bring awareness and healing to unequal power dynamics and the ways to develop greater intimacy between individuals and communities. By noticing the extreme contrast of what we don't want, we can bounce back and reflect on what would constitute an equal and fulfilling relationship. Equal does not mean tit for tat, but equivalent investment and maintenance of the partnership. Jupiter and Scorpio in its more positive form is the seeking and achieving of relationships that are deeply satisfying and entered into willingly and freely without a lot of unconscious baggage. I am another you, and when we understand that, we will see that our relationships reflect where we are at at a particular moment in time and what we may still be unconsciously carrying from the past. If we are adults, we will take ownership of our own emotions and reactions and work proactively to bring our best selves to the partnership. Since Jupiter will be retrograding in Scorpio from March 9th to July 13th, we can use the upcoming months to revisit areas of sexual, financial, and emotional imbalance in all of our most important relationships, and they do not have to be romantic ones. How can we address our damage and wounding and step more fully into our power and presence in love and work? The knowledge gained will not only help our everyday lives, but also contribute to a larger world where the need for healthy relationship modeling is paramount. Politics, nationals, and partisanship and donorship can all take a class in downgrading the power imbalances to secure a more productive and fulfilling future. Scorpio is nothing if not the ability to die and be reborn anew. Anything is possible with the right level of awareness and by first addressing the magical alchemy of close relationships, we can help spread the energy to transform the community of humanity here at this crucial opportune time for the evolution of mankind and the world. I'm astrologer Patrice Kamins.